Welcome back to Amino Acid Metabolism on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to discuss the generation of s methionine, also called SAM, which is going to occur via a cycle called the SAM cycle, also called the methionine cycle. And what we're going to see in this pathway is that methionine, the amino acid here, is going to enter into the cycle and will be able to generate the universal methyl donor s adenosyl methionine, which is a very, very important molecule for a lot of biosynthetic reactions and also things like epigenetic modification of DNA, since you have to methylate DNA and that's accomplished by the methyl group here on SAM. All right, so first of all, let's talk about the pathway and along the way, we'll notice a few things that are gonna be important. All right, so here is methionine. And methionine is going to have this adenosine group transferred to it. So you see here the sulfur of methionine is going to do a nucleophilic attack on this 5' prime carbon. And so that's going to generate s adenosyl methionine. And that's catalyzed by the enzyme methionine adenosyl transferase. Notice that these three phosphates are going to get cut off as pyrophosphate and inorganic phosphate. Now, this s adenosyl methionine has an activated methyl group. It's primed for being attacked by other functional groups. And if a nucleophile of some other molecule, such as this R right here, was to attack this CH3, then the R will receive that CH3, and then the entirety, all the other atoms in black, will be the leaving group. Okay, so there's a lot of different methyl transferases. This is not just one reaction. There's many, many, many methyl transferases. But s methionine will donate its methyl group to something like R, which becomes R-methyl. And in the process, the remainder of all of this, this these black atoms, all of them, that entity is called s homocysteine. So this molecule now has to be degraded and converted back to methionine. Now, this s adenosyl homocysteine, also abbreviated SAH, will be hydrolyzed by s adenosyl homocysteine hydrolase, and it will kick off the adenosine, which will go and do other things, as we know. And the remainder is just this amino acid, homocysteine. Now, the difference between homocysteine and methionine is that this homocysteine doesn't have a methyl group on this sulfur. We're going to have to get the methyl group back somehow, but it turns out that it's going to be through a fairly complicated process, and the enzyme that catalyzes this is methionine synthase. Now, you see here that there's going to be a couple of cofactors that are going to be required for this reaction. First of all, we're going to need a derivative of tetrahydrofolate, N5-methyl tetrahydrofolate. That's this molecule right here. And we're also going to need cobalamin, which is the, the scientific name for coenzyme B12. So we're going to need both of those things. Now, from a simplistic point of view, here's what you can imagine. The N5-methyl tetrahydrofolate is going to donate its methyl group to the cobalt atom of B12. Okay? And then the cobalt atom of B12 is then going to have the methyl group. Then that methyl group will be donated from the B12 onto the sulfur of homocysteine, and that's going to generate methionine. And so the purpose of having the B12 is it receives the methyl group from this tetrahydrofolate, and then it donates that methyl group to homocysteine to generate methionine. Okay. Now, based on this pathway, you can imagine that this pathway, in particular enzyme 4 here, methionine synthase, is going to be very uh, dependent on adequate intake of folate and vitamin B12 or cobalamin. Now you could imagine that if you are deficient in either one of these molecules, then the reaction of methionine synthase is going to suffer and you're going to lose out on the synthesis of some methionine. And that's very bad because if you lose out on the synthesis of methionine, you also by default lose out on the synthesis of s methionine, SAM, and your ability to methylate things is going to drop substantially. Okay, if you're deficient in both of these, that's very, very bad. Now let's ask another question. What immediate biological effects would present here in the case of cobalamin deficiency? And we've already mentioned the failure to synthesize methionine and, and s adenosyl methionine. But just in terms of this pathway, what other things might you expect to happen if you don't have enough cobalamin or vitamin B12? Well, you won't be able to run this reaction to its maximum extent, that is methionine synthase, and that means that homocysteine will not be converted to methionine to a very large extent. So we've already said methionine would go down, but that means homocysteine levels would actually go up. 
And I'm not gonna go into why this is here, but it actually turns out that elevated homocysteine levels are correlated with all kinds of cardiovascular diseases. And so that's one reason why you wanna make sure you're getting adequate folate and cobalamin, both, both of which are B vitamins. Um, whether or not it's this homocysteine directly or it's something else that's correlated with it, I'm not actually sure. And I don't know if they are, to be honest. But elevated levels of homocysteine regardless correlate very well with cardiovascular disease. So if you resupplement coenzyme B12 or folate, depending on which one's uh, deficient, you're going to raise the activity of methionine synthase back to normal and you'll be able to convert homocysteine to methionine in which case then you'll be able to resynthesize s methionine, and then this whole cycle will work to its maximum efficiency. All right, so hopefully I gave you some good information here on the SAM cycle or the methionine cycle. Um, hopefully you learned a lot, and please make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.